Let's talk about the safety of our sunscreens because they're safe, right? To answer that question, you need to know that sunscreen is regulated as a drug in the US. Then you're gonna need to know a little history. So, time machine, take me back to 1962. Up until this point, non-prescription drugs were sold in the US without having to provide any data proving they were safe and effective. So the answer to your question might have been no. However, things were about to change. In the late 1950s, a non-prescription drug called thalidomide entered the worldwide market. The drug was used to treat morning sickness in pregnant women, but caused a tragedy when insufficient testing led to over 10,000 babies born with severe abnormalities. To avoid this and similar tragedies, the US Congress passed the 1962 Kefauver harris Amendments. Among the rules the amendments introduced was that manufacturers needed to conduct well-controlled clinical studies run by qualified experts and that all the ingredients already used in non-prescription drugs must be evaluated for safety and efficacy, meaning how well a product works. Whew, so it sounds like we're safe, right? Well, when the Kefauver harris amendments were passed, more than 100,000 non-prescription drugs were already on the market. Reviewing each one for safety would take decades. So in 1972, they decided to make the process faster by assigning these drugs to therapeutic categories. Anti-acne was grouped together in one category, antiperspirants were grouped into another, skin protectants into a third, and so on. Today, there are over 80 categories and the FDA calls each one a monograph. The monograph acts as a recipe book, telling formulators what active ingredients can be used, in what concentrations, and what tests need to be conducted to prove safety. It even covers efficacy and labeling requirements. These monographs make sure that non-prescription drugs, also known as over-the-counter drugs, are safe by listing everything a manufacturer can use in order to sell its drug to the public. Once a final monograph is approved for a category, manufacturers don't need any sort of pre-approval from the FDA to release their products, as long as they follow the guidelines in the monograph. But that's the kind of useful information that subscribers to my channel can expect to learn. But back to the topic. So does this make our sunscreen safe? As an over-the-counter drug, sunscreen gets its own monograph, and like all others, it has to go through a three-stage process the FDA calls the over-the-counter drug review. If you want to read about each step, it all gets documented in the Federal Register. And we're all dying to read that on the internet, right? To start out, an expert panel reviews the ingredients to determine if they are currently recognized as safe. The results are published to allow for public comment. Then, a tentative final monograph is produced and published based on that feedback. Once lawmakers and the public have had sufficient time to respond to the ingredients, uses, warnings, and acceptable claims listed, the final monograph is published and hopefully enacted into law. This process has helped remove a lot of ineffective and unsafe products. So the question you're probably asking yourself now is, why are we debating about the safety of sunscreen in 2019 when the FDA has had the over-the-counter drug review in place since 1972 to make sure everything's safe? Well, it turns out our final sunscreen monograph has never been put into effect. The process for sunscreen started way back in 1978, when your mama was still wearing bell bottoms and groovy hair. The tentative final monograph wasn't published until 1993. Well. That took a while. In 1999, they enacted a final monograph, but it was stayed, meaning it was paused a couple years later. Now we have the Sunscreen Innovation Act that says the FDA has to have a final monograph by November 26, 2019, but I'm taking bets on whether they'll miss that too. Another reason we're having the safety conversation is that the 16 ingredients that are generally recognized as safe and effective were decided in 1978, 
Times have changed and so has our sunscreen. It's gone from the opaque stuff beachgoers occasionally dab on their noses to transparent creams you're told to wear every day. I mean, come on. When they approved the 16 ingredients we have now, an accurate way of measuring skin penetration for these ingredients didn't even exist yet. It's no wonder the FDA is reevaluating the safety of sunscreen ingredients. The FDA has reached out to cosmetic companies and said, hey, can we get more data? What they heard was, still wanna take that bet? Just because the FDA is questioning the safety status of the currently approved sunscreen ingredients, that doesn't mean you should stop putting the stuff on. Even the recent study conducted by the FDA, which shows some sunscreen ingredients can make it into your blood, only suggests caution. We have insufficient data and we need more, which is sort of how science is supposed to work after all. Meanwhile, we know for sure that sun exposure increases the risk of skin cancer, so keep slathering it on. How much? You'd be surprised. Check this video for more.